Now that we've derived the derivatives for sine and cosine, we can use them directly here. You're not required to use limit process to do that. Since we did all that and proved it, that means automatically whenever you do a derivative of cosine, for instance, we should automatically know what that derivative is and we can just set, write that in there instead of going through the whole limit process. Let's do that with these two examples. For this one, we're going to take the derivative of each term separately. So f prime of x, the first one is a constant times an x, so you're going to be left with a constant when you take the derivative. The second one, we're going to do minus 5, and then we're just going to multiply it by the derivative of cosine x. So the derivative of cosine x is automatically negative sine x. So again, that was from the definition we just talked about in the previous video. And then the last thing you're going to do is simplify it. So 4 plus 5 sine x, and then that would be it. That's your derivative. Next, we're going to do this one down here. Now when we do the derivative of this term, the pi is the same thing as a constant. So what I'll do is I'm going to leave the pi there and then multiply it by the derivative of sine, which we already talked about already, is going to be cosine theta. Now what are we going to do about this one here? Now this one, what you can do is uh, we want to apply the power rule to this. So I'm going to rewrite this term and I'm going to rewrite it as a one-third theta to the negative one-half. I'm writing it this way purposely so I can take the derivative of using the, the power rule. So again, the one-third I separate it. This is theta to the one-half power down below and I brought it up to make it a negative power there. So now I'm ready to apply the power rule. So what happens is the I have a one-third and then the negative one-half is going to come down in front, theta, and then subtract one from the exponent. So negative one-half minus two over two will give you negative three-halves. So now it's just a matter of cleaning it up to write the answer. So I have pi cosine theta, and then this part's going to give us a minus because there's a minus sign there. I get a one-sixth, and then the theta down below, I can write that as a positive three-halves power, or if you want to change it back into a radical, you can do that as well, but it's sufficient just to leave it like this. Again, the negative goes down below there anytime you bring it across the division bar. The, uh, the power turns positive, so this would be your final answer.